35 Flutter tips and tricks. When you start your journey with Flutter, you will quickly realize that there is too much file inside the Explorer. But there is actually one solution for this. You can open the command palette inside the view tab, search for the file called setting.json, and inside you can add this. I will make sure to add all the code of this video inside the description. And you can see that there is now four files nested inside the popspec.yalm. Your folder structure is now clean. But if you think this is cool, there is way better tips inside this video. Now it's time to add dependencies inside your new project. If you are like me and you go online to find the package version, this is a big mistake. Because you can just open the command palette and write add dependency. With this you can search for any package and it will add it inside your popspec.yalm. If you like to save time like this, I have many more tips. You can auto-generate big chunks of code by using the awesome Flutter snippet extension. Most of the time I will use this to create stateful or stateless widget, but you can also use this to create the init state, the dispose, and many other chunks of code. This extension is actually a huge time saver. But at this point we have a code format problem, and I'm sure you can find it on the screen right now. Yep, it's the const. But we don't want to add it manually every time. So I have a little magic solution for you. You can go back inside the setting.json file and add this code. This will make sure that every time you save, all the cons will be added automatically. I'm about to save the code right now. And you can see that all the cons has been added automatically. And since we talk about shortcuts, did you know that you can add multiple variable inside the same line of code? In this way, you don't have to write the type of the variable every time. Flutter will understand. Now that we have set up our project, it's now time to code. And my first thing is to define your code with very very small widgets. It will be more readable and more clean. But that's not actually correct. Because instead of creating functions, you should create widgets. And the reason is, if you create stateless widget, they will not be rebuilt inside your app. Which is better for the performance. It's now time to create a notch for the floating action button. For this you will have to use the floating action button location center docket. And create a circular notch rectangle shape for the bottom app bar. To make sure the background goes behind the floating action button, you will have to extend the body. You can even add an icon animation for your floating action button. For this you can use the animated icon widget. And you can decide how the animation will look like in five simple steps. First you need to create the controller and the animation. Then you define them inside the init state. I used an animation controller and a curved animation. The controller will not work if you don't have the ticker provider state mixin. The fourth step is to dispose the controller. And finally you can control the animation with the controller dot forward and reverse. But what if your code throw an error inside the init state? This will return the red screen and nobody really likes it. So I have a solution for you to never have this red screen again. Before the run app, you will add the error widget dot builder. This one will give you access to the flutter error details, which you can use to create your custom red screen. Now if I have a problem in my app, this is what I will see. I no longer have the red screen, but a custom error page. And now let's say you want to print something before the error, but the message is just way too long. Well, for this you can use the log instead. Just make sure to add the developer import. The print message on the left is too long to be printed in the terminal. The log will always display the entire message. But if you still want to use the print, you should wrap it with the condition is debug mode. This one is accessible with the foundation import. The next tip is how to create a glass morphism design within your Flutter app. This will create a glass effect for your containers. And you can actually do this in three simple steps. You first need the clip or rect then the backdrop filter, and finally inside you have the container. Just keep in mind that this is one of the morphism. You could also create the clay or the neuromorphism design. I have a video about it on the top corner if you want to check it. But the next tip is really cool. Let's say you want to change the color of the glass morphism design. With Visual Studio, you could just go over the color and select a new color that you prefer. And this will automatically give you the ARGB colors. Now let's talk about the scrolling fading animation at the bottom of the app. I will show you the code, but as always, everything is in the description. There will be something special in the code, let me know if you can find it. 
Inside the stack list, we have first the scrollable widget. Over this one, we have the ignore pointer with the animated opacity. And the opacity will be visible only if the value is one. We can create a condition for the opacity, add a duration, and inside the container, we have a linear gradient. And the special thing was the comments with colors. If you want to create such colorful comments, you can add the better comments extension. In your Flutter app, you can animate the transition between two widgets with the animated crossfade. All you need is to define the first child and the second child, create a condition for the crossfade state, which will return either the first or the second child, and add any duration. With this, I'm able to animate the transition between the title and the search bar. And now that we have the search bar, we have also the keyboard. What if I want to remove the keyboard as soon as I scroll? Well, for this, you can use the scroll view keyboard dimis behavior and you can use it either inside the list view or the grid view. Talking about search bar, I have something pretty cool for you. You can actually create super simple search bar within your Flutter app. You need to start by calling the show search and inside you will have your custom search delegate. And for this one, you will create your own class that extend the search delegate. And everything can be controlled with these four override. First, you need to create a list of search terms. If you want the complete explanation of the build action, leading result and suggestions, you can click the video on the top corner of this video or check out inside the description. It's pretty much the easiest way to create a search bar with Flutter, but I would like my search button to also have an icon inside. Did you know that you could add the dot icon after the elevated button? But I don't think it's enough. I still don't like the shape of the button. I think it will be better if it will be more rounded. And for this, I can use the shape stadium border. At this point, the buttons are very great. But what happens if my title is actually null? Since I use the null aware operator, I will have the default text to no title. The null aware operator can be used to create a default value if the variable is null. And since the title equal null is inside the set state, and the set state is the only thing triggered inside the unpressed, we are able to replace the curly bracket with the arrow. But this is only possible because we trigger one thing inside the unpressed. Now let's say you want to wrap your text with a center widget. I'm not sure if you know this, but you can use the refactor and wrap with a center. Flutter will then make sure to wrap everything perfectly for you. After this, we will create a list of custom widget. And because I don't want to add another column inside my widget three, I will use the spread operator. It's a nice way to reduce the number of nested widget within your app. Okay, but what is the overflow bar? That's funny because it's my next tip. The overflow bar will act like the wrap, but only if every widget can enter inside a row. Otherwise, it will act like a column. Now, let's say you want to trigger the hi and the hello function within your code. You could either use the say something that hi and say something that hello, or you could use a cascade operator. If you put two points after the class, you will be able to trigger any function one after the other. And these two code will do absolutely the same thing. Let's say you want to have access to a calendar inside your app. For this, you can use the show date picker, and it's actually way simpler than you can think. You need four things, the context, the initial date, the first date, and the last date. And just like this, you have access to the information of a calendar. That's cool, but the next one is even better. Have you ever end up in a situation where you need the height and the width value of the screen? And did you know that there is a widget just for that called the layout builder? This one will give you access to the height and width value available in the moment. On this example, every time I press the padding button, this will add more and more padding and reduce the available space. If you don't use the app bar inside the scaffold, you might end up with something like this. And to solve this issue and make sure the widget is not in the status bar, you can use the safe area widget. Inside my list of steps, I would like to add a switch inside a list style. Oh, and by the way, this is the stepper widget, but let's not count this as a tip. Okay, so to solve my problem, I can use the switch list style. But what if I would like the switch to look different on Android and iOS? I can add the dot adaptive after the switch list style, and this will make sure to fit the current platform. You can do the same thing with the icons. You can add the icons.adaptive and have a different visual on iOS and Android. At some point, you will need to create some marketing for your application, or just create the picture for the Apple Store and the Play Store. You can use the previewed.app website to do all of this. 
But how do you know if your application have great performance? Under the Material app, you have an argument called the Show Performance Overlay. When you set this as true, you will see in real time when you play with the application, every location where you need to improve the performance. This is represent as spike inside the second graph. But just make sure to run the application in profile mode, otherwise you will not have the real time performance. Maybe your goal is to test your application and you would like to automate this process. As you can see on the screen right now, everything is done automatically automatically. And this is because I use the integration test. This allow me to automate the process of testing the application. Most often we work with API and I used to debug the calls by printing the header and the body inside the terminal. But this is absolutely so wrong because you could actually open the dev tool, click on the network tab and see all the information about your API calls at the same location. And if you want to have more tips like this to make your application perform better, you can check the module three of our new flow advanced course. I will do part two of this video really soon so you should highly consider subscribing. Also it will help us to achieve our goal to beat William the react native guy. If you want to see more Flutter tips you can click the playlist available on the screen right now. I will also make sure to add it inside the description. So that's it for this one. Bye.